Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to sort of go through the evolution of the German K98K rifle and the German military. And to do that we have to go back to the, the Gewehr 98 here. So the Gewehr 98 was the first uh, large ring Mauser. Um, so Paul Mauser he really uh, strengthened up the, uh, the receiver here. And uh, by receivering, I mean this part right here. It's, uh, it's thicker than on uh, previous Mausers. Um, it also has a pretty long barrel, which was kind of standard for the time. It has a, uh, about a 29 inch barrel. Uh, now the, the key things to note with the Gewehr 98 is that uh, you have the large receiver ring, you have the, uh, the wood handguard, instead of like the other Mausers where the wood handguard goes all the way back to the receiver, uh, the wood handguard actually starts or the, the top handguard starts uh, at the in front of the rear sight, and then it goes just past the uh, the, the barrel band here. Uh, it doesn't go any any more or any further back. It's just sort of right here. Also, the uh, the barrel bands, and this uh, particularly this front one here, uh, the H style with the uh, the style that the bayonet lug and the the cleaning rod is is oriented. Uh, this has the um, just sort of front sight protector on it. So this is sort of your standard uh, German rifle uh, setup for, for quite a few years. The idea was they would arm the, uh, the infantry with this, uh, but they needed a, another rifle for other troops. The Germans did come up with short rifles for uh, like their cavalry and stuff like that, but they did notice how other countries like England and the United States uh, were adopting universal short rifles. And they, they started to take note of that. And in the early 1900s, Germany started um, experimenting with different barrel links, made some, made some changes here and there um, to the rifle concept until they came up with what they called the K98AZ. And that is this right here. Um, so this rifle, first off, you'll notice it's a lot shorter. Uh, it has about a 23 inch barrel instead. Uh, it has a uh, turn down bolt handle with a relief cut into the wood. Um, now the handguard style on this is um, very, very different. It goes a lot further forward. And also the, the top handguard here, it, it follows sort of the previous pattern of small ring Mausers where it goes all the way to the receiver. And this does have a small ring. This is a small ring Mauser. Um, and the wood goes past this handguard all the way to the very front. And uh, the very front is a lot different because it does have the, um, the little ears to uh, protect the front sight. The, uh, the bayonet lug is all at the very front. And I believe they put the bayonet lug all the way to the front uh, was just to give the, the soldier equipped with this uh, as long as length possible with a bayonet. So if he had to touch the bayonet on this, he wouldn't be at a, a total disadvantage to someone equipped with a, a long rifle. And then uh, this here is a stacking hook. It's one of the most notable features of the AZ. Um, and now one of the important changes with the uh, AZ is that they put a, a side sling on it. Because this rifle was meant mostly to be carried around on the back a lot of the time. So um, a lot of the pictures that you see of troops carrying this are or just stuff like artillerymen. And um, so they would carry this rifle in the back for long periods of time. So the side sling is, is it's very nice for that. Um, also, the, the rifle is just lighter. Um, it's much lighter because of the, the small receiver ring. And also, you, you can't see it under the handguards here, but there is a, uh, it's a straight taper. The barrel has a straight taper. So it starts off thicker and it just gradually gets skinnier Whereas on the Gewehr 98, um, it's stepped. So it'll, it'll be thick and then it steps down and steps down and uh, until the very end when it's, um, when it's at its thinnest. So the straight tapering of the barrel of the AZ, it is, it's more expensive, it's harder to manufacture, but it does make a, a much lighter rifle. Um, so you end up with a rifle that's about, I think it's about a pound and a half lighter. And also it's much shorter, much shorter, it's handier. Um, it's, it's nice to carry around this sling. It's just a really good overall rifle. And through World War I, um, this rifle sort of proved itself as the standard of what the German military sort of wants in a, in a rifle. 
th this sort of proves that a short rifle is uh, good in combat, it's, it's good in trench warfare, and that this barrel is long enough, pretty much. So along comes the end of World War I and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. And the Treaty of Versailles is important for German arms uh, manufacturing of the time and also for the, the nomenclature of the time because the Treaty of Versailles, it limited the number of uh, rifles that they could have and the number of carbines that they could have. The Gewehr 98s of the time, they were sort of updated uh, with the sort of uh, AZ style rear sight. And um, some of them were given turned down uh, bolt handles. So being that the number of rifles the German military could have, uh, in particular the number of uh, rifles and carbines, it's important because when the German military sort of reached the max number of rifles that they could have, and at the time rifles were considered the uh, primary military arm, and carbines weren't necessarily considered that, they were more looked at as like police guns or second line guns. So when the German military reached that limit of rifles, uh, what they did instead was they pretty much made a rifle that looks just like the Gewehr 98, except it has the, uh, the updated rear sight, which is more like the AZ sight, and it has a turned down bolt handle with the relief cut in it. And, but it has a standard uh, 29 inch barrel. And these were called the uh, Carabiner uh, 98Bs, and they're pretty much just carbines in the names. They had a side slung sling, but um, they were only called carbines just to get around the Treaty of Versailles because they ran out of the number of rifles they can have, so then they just called rifles carbines, and then, you know, then it's fine. So the Germans produced this uh, K98B for quite a few years uh, to meet their needs. And now then comes along the, uh, the, the Nazis, they, they start to take power and, uh, and around the, the early 30s, um, especially around you know, 33 when they took over, uh, pretty much German arms manufacturing didn't really care about the Treaty of Versailles anymore. They just they started to ignore it flat out and you kind of see that in some of the arms development at the time. So Mauser Obendorf, they created what they called their uh, standard model. And that rifle it looks pretty much just like a standard K98K, except that it has the, uh, the finger grooves in it, and a lot of them have a straight bolt. But it's the, the same length and everything of a K98K. It just had a, um, had, a, had a straight bolt, and it was mostly for export. Um, they sold a lot of them to other countries like, uh, like China, for instance. So around 1934, the German military, they're, they're looking at adopting uh, a new standard short rifle for their military. And they pretty much know what length of rifle that they want. They know they want a K98AZ length. They, they like this, you know, this 23 inch barrel length. So then comes the early uh, K98Ks. And uh, it's important to note that the K98K shares a lot more characteristics with the Gewehr 98 than it does with the K98AZ that uh, that the length is kind of patterned over. Now there's two trains of thought on where the K98K came from. There's the thought that K98Ks were basically just um, K98Bs with a shorter uh, 600 millimeter barrel length. They were just sort of shortened. Um, or that these were just turned down bolt versions of the standard model. Um, I think it's a little bit more likely that, um, that they're just shortened K98Bs. Uh, so what you can see here is that the, uh, the K98Ks, they have the large ring, uh, the large receiver ring, like the Gewehr 98. They have the, uh, the same uh, trigger, trigger guard as the, uh, the Gewehr 98 also, because the, the K98AZ is a little different. And it has the same setup as far as the handguard. So the top handguard, it starts in front of the rear sight and it ends just after the barrel band. And uh, of course this distance is a lot shorter on the K98K uh, because the barrel is shorter. Same sort of H style uh, front band and then the, uh, the band at lug. And this one's just missing a cleaning rod, but it would have a cleaning rod. And uh, you'll also notice that there is a lack of any type of uh, front sight 
on this K98K, and that's uh, because the, the early ones, they, they didn't have the, the sight hood yet. They actually just used the same style uh, sight protector as the, uh, the Guevara 98. Also, the, the stocks were made of a uh, hardwood. It's just um, a regular hardwood stock, and then it has a uh, flat butt plate, just like the uh, Guevara 98. So they're both hardwood, uh, flat butt plate rifles, but uh, most importantly now is uh, side slung, like the K98AZ. This rifle is dated uh, 1937. It was made by uh, J.P. Sauer, and uh, it's a numbers matching gun. And one of the cool things about this rifle is that it actually has uh, Weimar Eagles. Um, so the, the very beginning of the K98Ks, uh, the Nazis, they didn't start using Nazi Waffenamts right away. They kept using the, uh, the Weimar Eagles and the Weimar uh, Waffenamts. And just sort of as they wore out, they just sort of gradually replaced them um, with Nazi stamps. So on a rifle like this, being that it's around 1937, it's all Weimar Eagles except one. There is one uh, Nazi Eagle on this side. So the very early ones would be all uh, Weimar Eagles, and they'll be slowly replaced with, uh, with Nazi Eagles. So the later you get, the less uh, Weimar Eagles and the more uh, Nazi Eagles that you have on a rifle. Probably the most important reason of why the Germans went to the K98K, why they switched to the K98K, instead of just sort of sticking with the K98AZ, is that the, uh, the K98K is made using uh, most of the same machines that made the G98s. Um, even the, uh, the trigger guard is the, the same trigger guard as on a Gewehr 98. It just doesn't have the, uh, the hole drilled in it. Uh, it's the same, you know, same barrel bands, same wood sort of dimensions, um, same receiver ring, same trigger. Um, all the difference, differences with the, uh, the K98AZ, they just, they just sort of discarded this one and uh, stuck with the, uh, the Gewehr 98 pattern for the, uh, the K98K. The K98K also has a uh, has a stepped barrel like the uh, like the Gewehr 98, um, and with the with the stepped barrel and the large receiver ring, uh, the K98K is a little bit heavier than a K98AZ is. However, I feel the um, the improvement in the bolt, which is the uh, the bolt shape, is uh, it's a little easier to work the K98K bolt than the K98AZ bolt, in my opinion. So around the late 30s, they slowly started introducing uh, laminate wood stocks. Uh, laminate wood was a little bit easier to manufacture because you did not need a big chunk of solid wood. Um, and it was also stronger and less prone to, uh, to warping. It was a little bit heavier though, and that's, that's about the only downside to, to laminate wood. Um, so these, these uh, solid wood k k stocks are a little, little rare because of most of the war they made uh, laminate stocks. Uh, and around 1940, they started introducing um, this, the, they started putting slots in the front sight for the front sight hood. And then they also started putting on uh, cupped butt plates around 40, 41. And so that's what you have here is a pretty typical example of a uh, mid-war rifle. So this is, this is laminate wood. And uh, so you have, you can see the, the layers in the wood. It looks kind of like wood grain, but it's actual layers. Um, you have the, the cupped butt plate. Um, this is important sort of for two reasons because the, uh, the butt plate being cupped, it sort of holds and it keeps the, the, uh, the wood laminations from, uh, from separating. Um, it also is just a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger sort of for, for protecting the wood. Um, also, this is a lot uh, cheaper to make. So this is just uh, stamped steel that's just uh, bent in shape, whereas the uh, Whereas the f a flat butt plate on the uh, earlier k ks and the G98, this is uh, milled steel. So it's a lot uh, easier and cheaper to, to make the cup butt plates. So this is a pretty typical example of a mid-war rifle. This is a, uh, a BYF, which is Mauser Obendorf, uh, made in 41. Has uh, all Nazi eagles on it, so by this time they got rid of all the, uh, all the Weimar eagles. And again, this is a, a numbers matching rifle. So my opinion, I would say that um, this sort of mid-war K98K is uh, the pinnacle of the K98K production because there's still a very high quality of, uh, of, of, of craftsmanship that went into building these guns. They're very nicely finished and blued and everything. But also it does incorporate those features like the, um, 
like the hooded front side, the cup butt plate, and the laminate wood that, uh, that I believe are just superior features over the earlier Mausers. But superior or not, uh, the Germans couldn't sort of keep manufacturing this high level of quality. So the Germans, they couldn't keep up this sort of level of quality uh, very much more. The, the war is getting worse and worse and uh, resources were becoming less and less available, uh, including manpower, even stuff like steel was getting a little bit, uh, a little bit hard to produce and, and high, uh, high quality. Uh, so they introduced um, this, new, uh, this new model of rifle that they called the, uh, the Kriegs model, the, the war model. And kind of like all the other changes with the K-98K, um, these changes were sort of gradually implemented and uh, I have one right here that I'll show you. So this is a, uh, it's a BYF 44, so it's the same manufacturer as the one below it. Um, and you'll pretty much just, looking at the two right now, um, there's only really one major difference, and that is the omission of the little takedown disc in the stock. So these little takedown discs, um, they, they are little milled pieces of steel. It does just take, you know, time and labor to, uh, to actually make these and then you know inlet the stocks and then fit them in the stocks and it's pretty much just for one tiny little hole to stick the uh, the firing pin through uh, so what they came up with uh, was this they just they omitted that and instead they just drilled a hole through the cup butt plate so this hole goes straight through it's on both sides and uh, when you're disassembling your bolt you would just stick the uh, the firing pin in this and disassemble the bolt like normal uh, so this is this worked just fine, and this is what the uh, the Germans sort of gradually switched to in 44 and, and, and in 45. Other features of the Kriegs model. So if this rifle was a it was a full Kriegs model, um, it wouldn't have this nice bluing uh, finish on it. It would just have a sort of a, a crummy little phosphate finish, and probably not so much polishing to the to the different uh, parts, um, at least on the outside. But the uh, the how the metal parts fit was still pretty good polished. Um, they omitted the, uh, the bayonet lug and the cleaning rods on the guns. The cleaning rods were pretty much um, getting to be pretty obsolete by this time. They started issuing these um, little tobacco can uh, cleaning pouches, and those had a chain pulled through cleaning rod. Um, so nobody was really using these very much except to stack the rifles. Um, so they omitted these, omitted the bayonet lugs because they you know, found out that a, a very, very, very small percentage of troops were actually going into combat and using bayonets on their rifles. Uh, so they admitted that. Um, this also does show what the uh, what a hooded front sight looks like on the rifle. So that was pretty much it. The, the war ended with the Germans producing the, the Kriegs model uh, Mauser rifles. Um, funny enough, they're like the least quality of, of all the German Mausers, but they go for some of the highest prices of all the guns just because they are a little bit more rare and a little bit more desirable for people's collections. Now, a, a side note about this. Um, so the German Kriegs model stock has the hole, but if you ever see a stock that looks like this, it doesn't have the takedown disc, it has the hole, but that stock has the finger grooves, that's an Israeli stock because when the Israelis made stocks for their, uh, for their Mausers, um, they kept this uh, Kriegs model feature because they, and they kept this for basically the same reason. This was just cheaper to manufacture and it, and it did the same job, uh, but they liked the finger grooves, so they put finger grooves in their gun. So you'll never find a German Mauser with the Kriegs model uh, butt plate hole and finger grooves. That's, a, that's an Israeli um, stock. Now the Kriegs model rifles should not be confused with the, uh, the VK-98s or the, uh, the, the Volkssturm uh, Mauser rifles. Uh, the, the VK-98s were a completely, they were a completely different development and um, those rifles were made specifically for a Nazi party order, whereas the K-98Ks were made for the, uh, the German military. Um, so there is that sort of um, separate distinction of, of where the rifles were going to and who ordered them and what sort of uh, specifications the rifles were made to. So there you go. I hope you learned a thing or two about the German Mauser production in uh, World War II. Hope this helps you if you're, if you're looking for a rifle and you're trying to see what features are correct. An example of how you might use this information is 
say you see a gun that has a, uh, a late stamp on it, like say it's a 1943 or 44 production rifle, but it has a, a flat butt plate on it, it's probably an incorrect stock, and so probably the rifle is just mostly incorrect. So that's just one example of how you could probably use this information if you're, if you're trying to, to purchase a particular K98K. Thank you.